Hello and welcome to the Thursday, April 6, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. These days, JSON is everywhere, and with that, it's really kind of important that you learn to use the tool JQ, the ubiquitous JSON parser for the command line. Today, we do have a nice diary by Jesse who goes over how to use JQ in order to parse Cowrie data. Cowrie, of course, is part of our honeypot, so that's sort of the motivation for him to look at Cowrie logs closer. They are stored in JSON. JSON, at least that's one of the log format options you have. So he goes over how to summarize your logs quickly with JQ. And if you have an interesting vulnerability in garage door openers, as well as other devices made by Next, that's N-E-X-X, the trick with these garage door openers is that they connect to Wi-Fi. So it's not one of those simple garage door openers where you have to be in a certain vicinity and use one of those rotating uh, code kind of transmitters. Instead, you may be able to open your garage door from anywhere in the world. In order to facilitate this, there is an MQTT server. MQ is a message queue. It's often used for IoT devices like this. A garage door controller here could, for example, send status requests or updates uh, to MQ. The trick here with Nex is that all devices use the same password in order to connect uh, to this uh, MQTT controller. So the end effect is that uh, once you know what that username and password is, and that is sent to every single device with Nex, and that's also present in the firmware, you'll be able to update any other garage door that uses the same controller. And it's even not that hard to search for it because everybody uses that uh, same account. Messages uh, to garage doors worldwide are all broadcast to every single garage door, which of course means that you may be receiving uh, requests to open or close someone else's garage door, which your garage door will ignore, but you'll still see it. You'll see the user's email address and the last name, I believe, and first initial. So you could collect these messages and then easily search them and figure out which garage door you would like to open. The same company also makes alarm systems and they apparently also suffer from similar vulnerabilities. Nex has not responded to any communication requests, notifying them of these vulnerabilities. So there is no patch available. If you have an affected device, you probably do want to disconnect it from Wi-Fi for now. The password hasn't been published, but uh, again, it would be very simple for an attacker to figure it out and start playing with garage doors. And the next story I thought I already covered, but can't find it in the archives. Uh, well, uh, Microsoft is going to change how OneNote deals with embedded files. This, of course, has been a huge issue recently. The way this is going to be dealt with now is that if you download a OneNote file and try to open an embedded file that has a specific dangerous extension, then you'll get a warning message preventing you from opening that embedded file. You can still see the rest of the OneNote document. If you do need to open the embedded file, you first have to save the OneNote file to disk and then open it again, which of course then makes it sort of not downloaded and then you'll be able to open the embedded files still some danger left there but better than what we have now now if you wonder what extensions are being blocked uh, that's the same list that's blocked in outlook from uh, being opened so it's a fairly comprehensive list at this point but i'm sure hackers will find an extension that microsoft missed and Microsoft is also making updates to its auto patch service. This was uh, first revealed in April last year. And it's essentially where uh, you can, in an enterprise, define certain systems that will be patched first. If there are no errors, then the patches will be rolled out sort of in an incremental fashion across the entire enterprise. So one of the changes they'll make, for example, is that 
systems that are continuously sort of not accepting these auto patches are being removed from the service. Also giving administrators a bit more fine grained uh, insight into uh, what's happening with auto patch, being able to define these different tiers of systems that auto patch is using and also alert of expired licenses. And according to an article by HelpNet Security, the NPM registry is under increasing attacks for essentially spam packages. The problem here is that packages are being published in order to essentially just add links to the NPM website. So a basic search engine optimization spam or phishing pages and such are being added sort of in large numbers in one attack. Check marks apparently saw 15,000 phishing packages being added in a couple hours. The problem has been bad enough where it is uh, getting sometimes uh, to a denial of service conditions. Now, uh, typically they say that they have about 800,000 packages a month that are being uh, released. But uh, last month uh, that went up to 1.4 million. So not quite double, but maybe sort of 40% uh, more packages due to these spam campaigns. Well, and this is it today. And uh, well, as one special announcement today, my partner in crime for the web application security class, uh, SEC 522, was finally promoted to senior instructor today. So congratulations, Jason. Took only 15 years, so definitely were to be called senior by now. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.